so the next question, who were your first subscribers to The Muse and how did you go about getting them? We had around 20,000 people visit The Muse in our first month. Um, and lest you think that we had some sort of secret magic bullet PR knowledge, I'll say that for the entirety of the first company, I think we had like 3,000 people visiting a month. You know, we were like 3,000 people, like 4,000 people, like 5,000 people. It was just like this tiny little, um, but we kind of were able to crack a couple things on the Muse and, um, and use that to get awareness. Because you do, you know, ultimately you do need for people to have heard of your startup in order to understand if it's working, to get users, and to convince investors. Actually, this is not the question you asked, but I'm going to just derail for a second to talk through um, one of the reasons we focused so much on traction and user growth in the early days is that we did need to raise funding at some point because we knew for our model we wouldn't necessarily be able to be profitable right away, and I was just running on fumes. I was, we very much needed to have money to pay at least a basic salary um, you know, minimum wage even. And so I got really great fundraising advice from someone who said, you know, there's roughly speaking five things that investors are going to judge you on. And it's better to just knock one out of the park and be a 10 out of 10 on one of them than it is to be like a seven out of 10 on all of them. And the things are, you know, there's your idea. Like your idea is so brilliant that an investor like hears it and has to invest. That's very rare, but it happens. Two is your technology. Like the product or the technology is just so cool or so patented that like after playing around with it or kind of seeing it in action, an investor feels compelled to just give you all their money. Also lucky, but also somewhat rare. Um, next is team. You've sold your last two companies to Google. You know, you uh, are like Stanford computer science dropouts who won the Intel Science Fair and every other competition. Like there are a few hallmarks that an investor's mind say like, oh, I have to fund this person. But even if you're like, you know, X Goldman, X McKinsey, X whatever, great GPA, like that's still probably gonna put you a seven out of 10. There's lots of, you know, or, and, and I think whatever it is, like unless your team is like really a 10 out of 10, it's not gonna matter all that much, the team thing. Um, fourth is revenue. Obviously, if you're making huge amounts of money, like investors would be interested. And the fifth is traction. And this was the one that we knew we were gonna have to compete on because investors didn't necessarily like love our idea. Some of them really liked it, but no one was gonna say like, ah, oh, that idea is genius, I have to give you money. Um, our technology, like, it's very good. It's not going to cause anyone to fork over, you know, millions of dollars just by looking at it. Um, our team is really strong, but again, like, none of us has had multi-million dollar exits in the past, um, so we're not kind of just the, the, the top of the top there. Revenue, we actually have some really nice revenue, but again, it's not like, it's like a 7 out of 10, an 8 out of 10, it's not a 10 out of 10, and so we wanted traction to be that one that we were really, really strong. So we focused on this from the early days. and. When we were thinking of launching The Muse, there's a couple things I wanted. Um, one was I really wanted uh, a tech publication to cover us. And I spent a lot of time pitching different tech publications, trying to get the word out. Um, in the end, the way we were able to um, get coverage was partially because I met someone who worked uh, at a big tech publication while I was at a wedding. And you know, I didn't know what she did. We became friends. We talked about the company, she thought it was a great idea, and that led down the line. So I found that often a lot of the, the good coverage that we've gotten has come from me going to events and networking and just getting to know people and, and trying to do that in a very um, genuine way. And some people, like, I'll meet reporters and we'll become friends, and they won't write about us for a year. But eventually, if there's something that, you know, if they like what we're doing um, and they hear something that's, that, you know, they think there's a relevant piece there, They'll write about it, and so um, I think that's great. And I think it's sort of a long-term game. But when we also were starting uh, when we were first launching, we knew we needed to get um, we wanted to get a partner. And so I actually had approached Forbes. They have a great content platform that takes outside contributions. And I said, you know, we're creating a uh, career and job search community that helps people figure out what they want to do with their life. We're going to have some amazing content, and I'd love for you all to publish that on Forbes and link back to us. And um, I had to ask them a couple times. I had to ask a couple different people uh, to get a yes. Um, but I'm very persistent. Uh, and so it took me a couple of months because I don't like to bother people. But um, they did eventually say yes. And so we would have these you know, great job search articles appear on the Muse. 
with, uh, sorry, up here on Forbes with the bottom, you know, for more from the Muse, check out, like, link, link, link. And um, of the 20,000 people who visited our site in the first month, probably 25 to 35% came through those links. Um, that was a big source of early users we grew because if they liked what we were doing on this other site, they would like it on our own. And I also personally would do a lot of guest posting for other sites. Um, again, if you're um, a pretty good writer and you have a good viewpoint, you can find places that will publish you. Um, you know, The Muse publishes a lot of outside authors and it can be a really good way to get those publications audiences aware of your product or your startup. Um, and then the last thing we did was we really encouraged sharing. So we obviously made, you know, we had a lot of um, things on the site that were kind of easily shareable. We uh, really asked people to share. I actually um, briefly had my Gmail account shut down because I sent emails out to so many people saying, hi, like, I'm launching a company. I've never done it again. I think it's not good to abuse people's email addresses. But uh, I did it once, and it worked really well. I you know, sent this like, short, sweet, to-the-point email with a sample tweet and Facebook post in there. And I was like, you guys are all friends, people that I've met, people I care about. I'm doing this. I'm so passionate about it. If you like what I'm doing, I would really appreciate if you'd uh, you know, feel comfortable sharing. And, um, and a lot of people did. So um, yeah, I, I find that to be very helpful.